The ECU Pirates take their home field. And we welcome you to Dowdy Ficklin Stadium, Greenville, North Carolina College Football, presented by the Home Depot, number 18, USF, faces one and three ECU in an American clash. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm John Sadak. He's the College Football Hall of Famer, Randy Cross. Jordan Daigle will join us in just a bit. USF is the flagship early for the American this year, undefeated, while ECU comes off its first victory on Sunday against UConn. And ECU is really hoping that's going to give them some momentum. Not a great season so far, but a great offensive performance early. They held on to win that game. USF has done nothing but kind of start a little slow and then get better and better and better as this season has gone on. And, you know, Quentin Flowers, people say, what's wrong with him? Well, about the same thing was wrong with him last year. He has almost the identical numbers. Let's see if he kicks it in and does some great stuff. I tell you, a group that's really made it twofold for this team. One has been the running game. Two has been the defense, especially the run defense that has stuffed people up front. Spill them to the outside and let your speed kick in, as you see here against San Jose State in that opener. And if you get that pressure in the middle and then pressure on the outside pass rush wise that sets them up for something they do as well as anybody in the country that's get interceptions ECU passes it as well as anyone in the American tops in yards per game they've used two quarterbacks this year of late it's been the Duke transfer Thomas sir well Cirque was out two games ago with a concussion last week he played against UConn he was the Thomas Sirk that everyone expected to see ran the ball well threw the ball extremely well can throw those long routes with a lot of velocity he is probably as good as anybody in spinning that ball in the American Conference 73 degrees modest winds friendly for balls in the air and a nearly cloudless blue sky USF won the toss and deferred so the host Pirates have the ball to begin the game and the big boot Trayvon Brown from his three. He's got some space flags fly. He earns the 33, but will it be yanked back? Yeah, flags way back by about the 14 yard line. Charles Lamartina, our referee. During the return, illegal block in the back. Return team number 40. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Goes on Nate Harvey as we take a look at today's Chick-fil-A starting lineups. The aforementioned quarterback, the reigning offensive player of the week in the American Thomas Cirque. Career best 426 yards in the air. He completed Randy his first 11 passes of that game against UConn and had 15 completions of double digit yardage. Yeah, that's probably the reason he was the player of the week because a lot of those passes he threw last week went to Davon Grayson with over 200 yards receiving. Normally you have a day like that as a wide receiver on 11 catches. You're going to be the man in your conference. They were hoping that Jimmy Williams would have the biggest day. He missed that game with illness. Bull showing pressure. The keep by Sirk, who can run it. And he gets three yards as we meet the rest of the starters for ECU. Pivotal center. John Spellacy out, injured in practice this week. Garrett McGinn, minimal experience snapping. Well, that's the big thing. Six foot six, over 300 pounds, but does not have the consistency or the accuracy snapping. You're going to see how good a hand-eye coordination Thomas Sirk has early. Florida State transfer. Edge pressure comes. They chip it. Sirk dead to rights. Incomplete. And let's meet the defense of the USF Bulls that brought that major pressure. Dietrich Nichols, one of the most dynamic defenders in this league. He really is. He's got that ability to intercept. He's got 10 interceptions in his career, one of the top active guys in the country. And he also has the ability as that nickel back to take your best player away. He can erase your most your most significant impact receiver. Yeah, two of those 10 picks last week. Husan Howe is in. He's the third down back. A crowded stand up front. Cirque flips it out and finds Grayson, who's immediately hammered. At the 13, they only get three, and USF holds on third down. ECU forced to punt. Yeah, Augie Sanchez, the middle linebacker, drops into his zone area, and as that pattern crossed, Sanchez was sitting there just waiting for him. That was a very, very nice defense by USF, limiting the possibilities. When you have third and long, you can set up fences like USF just did and take away the chance to get a first down. 
And do we see Dearness Johnson out there to return punts? He's not done that all year. Austin Barnes, Eastern Michigan transfer, gets it away from nearly midfield. Johnson has some shake to him. An outstanding field position as the primary running back gets his first punt return of the campaign. Our Chick-fil-A starting lineups for the USF Bulls. The poster man of the league this year, last year's Offensive Player of the Year, Quinton Flowers. This is about the time of the year. He did it last year. You come close to the month of October, Quentin Flowers just hits the accelerator and starts putting up ridiculous numbers. Against this ECU defense, he's going to have a chance to put up great rushing numbers. I know they want to stop him big time from running the ball, making him throw. He can impose his will. Inside run. They get a few. Here's the rest of the starters for the USF Bulls. Their top pass catcher is Marquez Valdez Scantling. Has to be a little bit more consistent. He's going to have a really good year this year by the time it's over. But he needs big plays and confidence early. Tyree McCants off his hands, and that's going to injure your completion percentage, but the number's woeful for ECU's defense in multiple categories. Jordan Williams, head coach Scotty Montgomery said, would be the most important player on defense today. He's got to be reading that quarterback. He's got to be reading that read pass option. He's got to find a way in a box to contain a quarterback like Flowers that can get out of that box pretty quick. Quentin Flowers, the dynamo from the gun. And they power it on the ground, depending upon the spot that looks like it's close to a first down. Thunderous run by Trayvon Sands. Well, if it's on the if it's on the 29, it's gonna be a first down. Nice job up front. Offensive line starting to come together. Be their third game where you've had the same group up front. Sands showing some elusiveness. Boarded after a couple. And ideally, U USF is an offense, in my opinion, if they can master first down to be a significant yards type of a down, they can just be a nasty offense to deal with. Because the defense is completely on their heels if they can get to where they consistently get about five. Needing nine for the first. One block holds. Defenders swarm late. Devon Sutton, who plays that hybrid pirate position, part of the pile, driving back Valdez Scantling. Sets up a third and short. Now when you get this offense spread out and you have a guy like Quentin Flowers, you've got to concentrate on Flowers. Make sure he's the guy. He can't beat you in this situation. Needing only a couple. The silent toe tapping and then the push over guard they're in the red zone and they get the first look at the push up front in front of flowers it's a read he gives the ball and after he gives the ball you see that white wall those jerseys and pants there's no penetration of purple got to get across the line of scrimmage if you're going to stop this running game play fake to johnson oh contact came and the flags are out tyree mccann shouldered before the ball arrived. Pass interference. Defense of a 42. Spot foul. Automatic first down. The aforementioned Devon Sutton, who's one of four former walk-ons now on scholarship starting on defense. Look at Flowers just step into this thing. He delivered a bullet to McCants. McCants was falling by the time the ball got there because he was tripped. But that ball had completion written all over He's, yeah, He can do it all. He can also official, officiate if you need him to. Well, if he can do that, I think they <laughs> will remain undefeated if he can throw flags on every play. Play fake to Dearness Johnson. Flowers has to make a play with his feet and sails it back of the end zone. They were trying to get that ball to, to Mitchell Wilcox, the read pass option. Trying to get the ball right there to the tight end. Tight end stumbled as he as he cleared right about the goal line. And that's Sorry. a bit of a wrinkle to use the tight end in these spots. Yeah, that was put in just for this game. They put that in just specifically for this red zone area. They had it. It was going to be there, but he fell down. 
The Ernest Johnson stumbles just shy on the doorstep inside of the one. Does this screen quick QB keep? Does his knee hit? Yeah, well, they're going to have to ECU take a look at this again. Takes a first charge timeout of the half. And ECU calls this is a timeout. timeout. Is that anticipation of a quick snap and Flowers' power? Oh, it was going to be a quick snap. They were going to get right up there and run that play. And you got a guy, Charlie Strong's got Flowers in his back pocket. Does the knee hit the ground? Does the elbow hit the ground? I'm not sure if that's not a touchdown. Down. But does the does the knee hit? Run it back a little bit. Okay, it's down. Go, go, down. The previous See play that? is under further review. That ball's over. When this area gets on the the knees get on the ground, even the thighs. You know that 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 kickstand he puts down on the ground pushes him forward. And before the knees and the thighs hit the ground, I think that ball creases the goal line. I think that's a touchdown. So in this case, East Carolina might have avoided a quick play by USF, but it also gives everybody a chance to see that play and what, you know, to me at least, looks like a touchdown. Do the Bulls have pay dirt? This is an explosive offense for Charlie Strong, led by O.C. Sterling Gilbert, who's been with him at multiple stops was with him at Texas in 2016. Bulls have scored 30 plus points in 21 consecutive games. After further review, rolling on the field stands, runner short of the goal line. But they've third been down. slow to start games this year. This will be a significant third down. And are you in, granted how close you are to the end zone, four down territory if you're USF? I think you go for it for two. I think you go both plays right here, third and fourth down if you don't get it. With this offensive line, I think Ruff's did a nice, nice job at center, 74. Let's see how these guys identify and then move into the end zone with the defensive players. Bit of a low snap. Standing up, touchdown, Dearness Johnson. Very nice up front. They didn't necessarily move anybody back, but they moved them out of the way, and that left a hole for Dearness Johnson to power through. They have the short field. Johnson on punt return helped some. He gets his 12th career touchdown. And the point after good. So USF on its first possession takes the ball 39 yards in a shade more than two minutes. And number two pays it off. The ranked Bulls on top. USF on top 7-0 at ECU as we shift to the sidelines and welcome Jordan Daigle to CBS Sports Network for more on the identity challenges of our quarterbacks today. Thank you, John. Well, both starting quarterbacks are continuing to find themselves in a new offense. USF senior quarterback Quentin Flowers is still developing his instincts under first-year head coach Charlie Strong's new offense, and it's been a new language for him. For ECU graduate transfer Thomas Sirk, learning, learning the playbook has been a relatively seamless transition, having played under head coach Scotty Montgomery, his offensive coordinator, all four years at Duke. Coach Montgomery telling me the focus has been on Thomas learning his players and developing that trust. John. Well, thank you, Jordan. Yeah, the personnel, a week-by-week -week growth. Trayvon Brown, who had a pretty good kick return first time around, nullified by penalty. Gets to keep his yardage this time around. A second look for Cirk and company on offense, and now flags are out well after the play. Charles Lamartina, our referee, as they huddle up. Penalties have been a problem for the Bulls this year. 120th in America, 10 flags per game, including two targeting calls on defensive lineman Deidrin Sinat. And you got to be smart when you get into this part of the game. That thing, that play right there, you saw the coach getting after Sutton, the line, the running back, playing on some special teams. 
But again, go back to the, you just got to be smart. After the play is over, unsportsmanlike contact, kicking team number 36. 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down. Sutton, the senior out of Tampa, Florida. What do you see? That is number well, 36. Check it out. First. Gets up off the ground. Unsportsmanlike foul. And gives a little short, short right to the chops. That'll do it. Right. It's very, it's, it's great early in a fight, but early in a football game, it's not very smart. So that gives ECU a shorter field to work with. Zerk on the keep and they sniff that out. He gets swarmed. Augie Sanchez, part of the trio, along with Mike Love, as we take a look at your keys to this part of the field. Well, for the Pirates, Zerk and destroy. I mean, they want him to be able to throw the ball and also be able to hurt you with the run. Haven't seen that too much, but the Bulls want to put attack inside out. They want to start at the quarterback, go to the running back, and spread outside from there. Off the fake, they set it up in the flat. Quay Johnson, the senior, gets only three there in the swing. ECU does a lot of it with the pass, very little with the run. The Pirates are 13th in America in passing yards per game, 115th on the ground. A nice, nice open field tackle there by Abraham. No one else around him. Edge pressure. Comes the blitz. Sir. One on one! Caught! Jimmy Williams! Takes the top off the defense, and that's just how they drew it up. Prior to the pass, holding. Defense number 54. The penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. Weak side linebacker, Nico Sautel. Just pure speed. That's what you're getting here with Jimmy Williams. A little pent up energy. Hasn't played in a couple weeks. But look at look at what Thomas Sir can do. We've seen him run a little bit. That's why he's the centerpiece of this offense now that he looks comfortable. He's the guy you got to start with if you're going to stop the Pirates. Lobbing way too tall. Sails that one. It's nearly hit the coach's tape camera operator. Well, I know that was a great decision. If you're going to throw that thing out of bounds, you know, threaten somebody standing way out of bounds with the ball. You know, last week, that 30 of 39, three touchdowns, no interceptions. That's more typical Thomas Sirk. Who saw how juking a path to the 11. You know what what makes him Sirk difference is he can throw like this but he also can run so well he's six foot four and you've already seen him a couple times when he has run the ball he opens forward so if it looks like you're getting him for a two yard game he ends up getting four yards due to his length brings that different dynamic six four to you see that gaudy gear that he has on his left elbow hyper extended him for our own Jordan Daigle and her conversations with the QB. Off the hands of Trayvon Brown. Ooh, gave Brown the high cheese there. There was plenty of plenty of speed on that ball. That's trying to fit that fit that sucker in a, in a little high and away, and Brown just couldn't. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. By Ram Trucks, proven to last. And by Chick-fil-A. Start game day strong with the new breakfast hash brown scramble bowl. The Pirate statue just outside of Dow Stadium. Purple and gold on prominent display choice right there as you get out of bounds just don't make contact so now USF which has a darn good offense as it stands while it's had some inefficiencies this year flowers such a dynamic playmaker field position at the 40 and here are your keys offense versus defense well we keep that running game going the way it has been going and that's going to open up more and more pass and they want to make flowers beat him with the throw with his arm 
Here on the ground, Johnson leading the path, and Flowers dashes! Charlie Strong recruited him as a DB based on his athleticism at Louisville, and he darts all the way, piercing the red zone. We talk about ru running backs having patience. Look at that patience, waiting for the blocks to set up, and then he just goes. That's why you got to make him beat, him beat you with his arm. The keeper again! Nobody home! One man wrecking crew. No penetration, no support run on the outside, and a, and a running back slash quarterback that is as dynamic as anybody in the country with his ball with the ball in his hands and air around him. You give him air around him, you will not touch him. 35th career rushing TD for Flowers. And the point after, good. They start at the 40. Flowers gets a couple of touches and gets a score. Total bite on the misdirection and an easy path to Pater. Welcome back to Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. Let's check in on Larry's Roadshow, brought to you by Dr. Pepper. The ECU Pirates have gone above and beyond to market themselves to recruits with pirate-themed scholarship offers, or scrolls, I should say. These one-of-a-kind offers come complete with burnt edges and a wax seal. All are made directly in-house. On August 1st, about 30 of these scrolls made their way into the hands of 2018 recruits. And for all of you Game of Thrones fans, you may appreciate this purple wax seal. I mean, I know me being a GOT fan, I can. Now all we need is just a Raven to deliver them, right, Randy? Absolutely, those things are pretty small. Raven carry that thing easy. Well, how about uh, House Flowers? How were the Bulls able to find the end zone? Well, Anderson goes down, Williams goes out, and that leaves up this alley that forms for the touchdown. Watch. End down. Linebacker out. That was ridiculously easy. If you're going to give that kind of that kind of room, you're in trouble. ECU giving some space. They go empty. They've got Darrell Scott out wide. ECU has been outgained by Flowers to this point. They pick up some of the difference to Davon Grayson. Incomplete. Unable to secure it. The team's leading pass catcher who had that explosive performance against UConn on Sunday. Yeah, he really did. Uh, too bad because when you open up with an empty backfield like that, you obviously are saying we're not really going to run it unless we're going to run our quarterback. And too much of that would probably not be a good idea against this defense. But when you get these shots to get these seven to ten yard gains on first down and your ECU you have got to get them. You can't afford drops. Already seen a few in the early stage of the game. One was that hard fire to Trayvon Brown. Whistles at a timeout. ECU calls it second timeout already. ECU takes their second charge time out of the half. This is a 30 second timeout. So one timeout left for ECU dealing with a deadly defense for South Florida. This USF program was ECU. not very good last year. The numbers bear out and with pretty much the same personnel. They are one of the best in America this season. Well they are a lot of that credit goes to you know love and Hector and Sanchez a little bit to Sanat. Sanat's the stuffer in there but he's been missing some time with a couple ejections. But this is a defense that's built to stuff you inside and spill you. And when you spill, you usually spill defensively because you feel so good about your talent at linebacker and defensive back, obviously. But this defense has excellent speed. So teams that figure they can just run around this defense, sorely mistaken. They have a new coordinator in Brian John Marie, Florida native. His defense held Temple to 85 total yards and for six turnovers a couple of Thursdays ago. And that timeout was because they wanted a review on that last play. They think the ball was completed. That ball definitely hit the ground.
He, he bobbled it at first, but did he squeeze that right forearm underneath the ball before it got to the ground? Could be a good use of a timeout here. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. It is an incomplete pass. ECU is charged with the second timeout of the half. So now the Pirates have only one timeout. The call stands. And still 10 to go for the first. USF had shown pressure early only a three man front on the second and ten. Cirque. The leap and off the hands of Davon Grayson. Nice job by Ronnie Higgins reacting to the pass and get Hoggins and getting that hand in there and knocking that thing out got a flag on the field. And it looks like it'll go against the Pirates. Holding offense number 78 10 yard penalty. Second down. Left tackle Messiah Rice, who was suspended early this season, had brought back some of the slim stability they've had on that line. Yeah, 78 left tackle definitely had a shot at Josh Black. Black just kind of squirmed around him, made him grab him by the waist. The second and 20, ECU's been behind the eight ball in many ways early. Pressure on Sirk, and he's down. Sweeping into the backfield, Bruce Hector, top 10 in program history in sacks, number 14. And that was not a slow pressure by Hector. Hector lines up as a left defensive end at the top of your screen. Nice job inside. He gets the payoff of the sack. It had been his pressure freeing up Mike Love for his team high three sacks early on the campaign. Design run on third and long, and Sirk picks up a lot of those yards, leaves himself somewhat prone. Down to the 21 by Ronnie Hoggins. But those are lot, those are yards they'll give up. And East Carolina's got to find a way. I don't, you know, a speed sweep, a draw. Something they've got to start developing some kind of a run game. Otherwise, Thomas Sirk is going to be under that kind of pressure and take those kind of hits this entire game. ECU just one of four on third down. Of course, that was not a very achievable one. Austin Barnes flags as he was hit. He is writhing in pain. Deernis Johnson corrals it at his 33, but Barnes clutching at his lower half. Well, that was definitely an extended leg right foul, after the contact. Roughing the kicker, defense number 28, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Trayvon Sands, who's been a special teams dynamo. Remember, he had that downed ball inside of the 10 against Temple, was all over the field two Thursdays ago. You get a kicker, you know, everyone always assumes you, know, you look at that lead foot, the one that they kick with, but the most vulnerable foot the most is that plant leg that's on the ground as those guys are all coming at you. Noticeable limp. The grad transfer makes his way off the field. So two penalties on USF already four on ECU. These are two of the most flagged teams in America. ECU right outside the 100 mark of the 129 FBS programs. USF 120th in penalties per game. Modest play fake. Sir. Open target and the twisting grab from Quay Johnson as they launch it over midfield. Well. You hear the term patience for a running back. Here's patience for a quarterback. Cirque sat there, sat there, and then lobbed that thing in just in the perfect spot before he got smacked. 21 yards of the big play, a crowded front. Cirque doesn't like it. 
Tony Peterson, his signal caller or play caller, I should say, former Marshall QB, calls the action from upstairs. Darrell Scott, some wiggle to the 40. Hey. For ECU, they'll use four different men in the backfield. And Scotty Montgomery, the head coach, told us yesterday he's looking for the hot hand. He's not necessarily leaning toward any one running back week to week, series to series. And whoever really gets a chance, they also see uh, Penix in there too, 27. Trying to stretch it out of the option. Not much there. And that's just common sense, though, John, with the running back situation, because you can't have your biggest running threat just be your quarterback who happens to be a guy that can also throw the ball really well. You know when Cirque was at Duke that's how he kind of burst onto the scenes he was throwing the ball really well but he also you know that first big game against Virginia Tech where Duke beat him he had over 100 yards rushing. Cirque some trouble on the handle running for his life open target and he makes the throw. They get the first down. Trayvon Brown has had some drops issues at the start of the game. Catches this one clean. A lot of grabbing on that play by the USF defense. Sirk gets out of the pocket, delivers the ball to Brown, but watch the grabbing. There's one, two, three. Not too much hitting. Right now it's uh, arm tackles for USF, and that plays into ECU's advantage. And that's something that plagued USF last year, clean tackling. Often able to get to offensive players, but not necessarily make the play. Off the play fake, Cirque loading up, one on one. Davon Grayson! Touchdown, Pirates! <laughs> 31 yards, his team leading fifth touchdown grab of the campaign. Well, Cirque gave him a play fake to nobody. Wasn't a running back to that side. They bid on it anyway. And there's accuracy and arm strength from the ECU quarterback dropping that thing in the perfect spot. Not bad defense. You asked Scotty Montgomery how ECU could go back to being a dominant team at home. He said it all started with consistency at quarterback. Yep, and he's got a little consistency. Doesn't hurt when they rough the kicker. And what goes from a nice stop to a touchdown drive because of a dumb mistake on special teams. Thirty-one yard scoring strike. Thomas Sirk hooking up with Davon Grayson. Tomorrow morning, eight Eastern, our top crew is sounding off as our panel gets you up to speed on everything from the field of fantasy. Don't miss that other pregame show presented by Kubota on CBS Sports Network. So Thomas Sirk takes to the air. He's six of ten, 110 yards passing to begin the game, and some long connections spear that drive. Hey, really, it's now incumbent upon this pirate defense, though, to put some kind of crimp in flowers in this running game. You know, Robert Purnty and his defense has to find a way to stop this entire group. And look at what they, I'm sorry, John, look at what they've done so far rushing. You know, that was an easy touchdown. Had a couple of pretty nice runs by Flowers. One to the left. And then one to the right where it was just knock knock nobody home cut back inside there was nobody in there but an official in a striped shirt. And Quentin Flowers able to celebrate going in a giant difference on the ground and most of those yards have been accumulated by the senior QB. Off the play fake the fire too strong flag out looking for Mitchell Wilcox his tight end. That was up top at the very top of the screen. Battle between the Dukes. Did you get some hands in the face usually in that type of a matchup? Guys coming off the line of scrimmage. Boxing match in football? A little bit. There is no foul. No foul. 
for offensive pass interference. The blocks are legal. We've seen a, a couple of clean drops so far today. One time Flowers threw the ball to the other direction. Was a little bit of an off. Yeah, I mean, that ball was in the air. He was still technically a receiver. At least that's the interpretation. Here's Darius Tice, who's a bruising runner. He's not the starter at that halfback spot, but he splits carries with Dearness Johnson. There was some concern with the loss of Marlon Mack departing early for the NFL, and Tyson Johnson have handled it really well. Tice has been the missing ingredient. He's been the power. They haven't had that kind of power here. They've been perfect on third down. And Tice thwarted in the backfield. The bruising runner falls short. I got to ask if you want to go for it here. Good job up front by ECU. Nice stuff by the defensive line. They stay on those blocks and come off to make tackles. No one moved out of the way there. And they will go for it. Alex Turner ripped him down and punt time here. Jonathan Hernandez second in the American. 43 and a half per punt. Quay Johnson lets it bound. Pirates will have it at their own 32. Now ECU has faced a juggernaut of a schedule to this point. Don't dismiss James Madison, the reigning FCS national champs. They are a really, really good team. West Virginia can score with some of the best, and Virginia Tech will find out exactly how good they are nationally later tonight when they face Clemson. Yeah, I, I, I know Scotty Montgomery was one of the comments he, he made to us was, yeah, I'd like to see some of the other people that thought our losses were kind of out of whack and funny. See how you guys would do against Virginia Tech. <laughs> In those teams in West Virginia, those teams are going to score on anybody in the country. Also thought his team was better for that experience. Oh, wide open. Grayson shows some shake, and he's got the first down, eluding Ronnie Hoggins. As good as Hoggins tackled that last time the ball was out there in the air, this time he is evaded. Throw those short ones to get them to come up and then try to go over the top and over their head. Tyshawn Dye. Only gets a couple. What can ECU do to springboard its run game? Does it need to strike more balance? Well, not, not to be the master of the obvious, but I, I think it starts with blocking. You've got to be able to control people up front. USF. With the guys in the ground, with their hand in the ground, are not easy to physically control, especially Sanat, number 90 inside. Empty, backside pressure, off the hands, tipped, intercepted! The bull turnover machine continues, and Augie Sanchez says, Thank you very much, I'll take a TD. There won't be a thing underneath his Christmas tree wrapped any better than that one. That was just a gift. The nightmare for most offenses is if balls are batted or balls are tipped and they're tipped up because that one is tipped up and it goes right into the, the eyes of Augie Sanchez and he's able to funnel it into his hands and ferry that thing into the first pick six among the Bulls FBS best 13 interceptions. They lead America in turnover margin and turnovers game. Plus 11 on the campaign in margin, plus seven points as a result of the pick six and the PAT. USF takes plum advantage of ECU's seventh thrown interception, a tip ball off of Pirates' hands. Off the hands, into the air, and right in front of Augie Sanchez. Quay Johnson looked it in, then looked it up. Once it got up, Augie Sanchez took it in. Augie Sanchez, the converted fullback, who's well on his way to being the all-time leading tackler for USF. Trayvon Brown. He's been solid on return today. Only had one return on the year. 
entering this game and now there's a lot of pressure on the Pirate offense after that 23 yard run back thanks to what number 43 Augie Sanchez was able to make of the tip ball thrown by Sir. You know when you're in this situation as an offense you can only kind of control the things that you do. Keep doing some of the things you've done well if you're Thomas Sirk in this offense. The best things they've done in this offense so far is get protection for your quarterback and press the ball down the field. Not a lot of time of possession. It's been all over the place today on the first four possessions. An all ACC transfer backfield Sirk out of Duke. Tyshawn Dye from Clemson. Dye with a gash, stiff arm, and rumbles over Nico Sautel. That's a gain of five. That's going to help for the Pirates to get that kind of pop on first down. Well, you get into second and five. Now your play calling opens up. Now the decisions that Thomas Sirk has to make on the field as far as judging where the defense is and what plays to get out of. It's not so much what plays to change to. It's if you've got a play, bad play, you've got to get out of a bad play. And that's where Sirk does have latitude. Darrell Scott has Sautel on his back. Only as a yard to the 34. Yeah, Sautel's hunted that thing down from the backside. Good job onside. We very open in this game that this defense can stuff you up front. They stuffed ECU up front pretty well. In fact, the backside linebacker was able to catch that thing from behind Sautel because of the job the D-line did up front. Two of five on third down today. Motion from Grayson. Sirk locked left side. Heaving longer. Timing not there with Jimmy Williams. Jamon Thomas was in coverage. And they hold again on third down. The USF has had such a decided advantage on the ground, and certainly a defensive score is going to slant things even more dramatically. But the Bulls have owned field position, they've owned the football, and they've owned this game to this point. Yeah, the goal, the goal of Prunty and the, and the defense for ECU was make Flowers beat us with his arm, not with his legs. So far, not so good. Austin Barnes, by the way, appears to be okay. Remember. He was limping after the penalty when he was run into. Dearness Johnson has the 28. Another flag. Special teams have not been clean today. The penalties continue to mount on both sides. This is the seventh flag of the game. First six, four have gone on ECU. Just in the first quarter. There's no foul for an illegal block in the back. First down, USF. So wave it off. This weekend, the American Football Coaches Association's annual Coach to Cure MD initiative, an attempt to raise awareness for Duchenne muscular dystrophy, a genetic disorder in young men. 10,000 coaches are participating nationwide, including USF and ECU here today. To learn more, go to www.coachtocuremd.org. Flowers keeps, finds the same Flowers to the 45 yard line, picks up 16 yards. Watch the blocking on the left side. They don't have to take care of too many people. Flowers takes care of two guys they never even had to block. His ability to make people miss is pretty stunning in, in open air. It's something that Scotty Montgomery talked about when we met with him yesterday. Most quarterbacks run away from defenders in contact. He could walk that tightrope and sprint it for yards. Flowers dominating the first quarter, and the 18th-ranked Bulls up after one quarter of play, 21-10. Already 21 points scored by USF. Defensive coordinator Robert Prunty promoted to that spot after the West Virginia blowout. Had a game plan to try to turn things around today. Yeah, it was pretty simple, really. Don't let Flowers beat us with his feet. Have to make him beat us with his arm, with the throwing. So far, not so good. Three carries for 76 yards for Flowers. The strength of this defense, John, is the D-line. And that's why Prunty has so much faith in his guys as he thinks the line can control the line of scrimmage. Only three men up front here. Dearness Johnson 
Gets about three and a half on first down. First down, USF has averaged a shade over seven yards per play on the game. Last year, Randy, they were second in the FBS over eight yards per play. They entered today a smidge under five and a half, and their bad third down numbers were somewhat dismissed by O.C. Sterling Gilbert. He said it's not about third down, it's about first down. And here on second down, very little for a third and long. You know, if you talk to an offensive coordinator, he's going to tell you about third down. Talk to a defensive coordinator, he's going to talk to you about first down and dictating from there. Charlie Strong, who made his hay on the defensive side of the football, first a coordinator during his days at South Carolina with Lou Holtz. Here's third down and seven. The only rush three. Flowers time to throw. One on one. Finds his man. Marquez Valdez Gantling. And they're in the red zone. Pretty amazing play. Bobby Fulp is on the coverage. Scantling is the ball is there. But Fulp's got that nice hand coming across the chest of Scantling as he's catching it to no avail. Good concentration. And the game plan, right, make Flowers beat you with his arm. He did so there. The artist Doc Johnson trying to reverse field. And he's contained. And there's a little bit of the, an idea of stopping the run and why that front seven, you know, the def defensive coordinator Prunchy's got so much faith in his front seven, the front four and his linebackers, front, to front four and his two linebackers. Awesome issue. At the mesh point there, the ball briefly on the ground. Flowers able to stumble upon it, and they'll lose three yards. See, right now, ECU's lining up with three defensive linemen and four linebackers pretty much pretty far off the ball. So they're going to let the linebackers watch the ball, watch, watch Flowers and react to him and hope these three defensive linemen up front can control the five offensive linemen. In the past, they would throw to running backs in situations like this. That's been curtailed some this year. Flowers, some contact and the ball incomplete. And looking for Darnell Solomon, the freshman who got the start at wide receiver. Little bit of mission accomplished. You stop the run on a couple of plays, though, you know, granted one time with their cooperation, you get into a third and long and you tell Flowers, beat us with your arm, and he couldn't do it. About 37 yards out, Emilio Nadelman tied the American record, made five field goals. That was against Temple two Thursdays ago. And the kick is good. So Nadelman has made 16 of his last 17 going back to last year. And the Bulls get some points, 24-10. Football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Bud Light, famous among friends. And by Humana. VCU down 24-10, early stage of the second quarter. The Bulls just tacked on a 30-70-yard field goal make from Emilio Nadelman. Now his kick. Trayvon Brown lets it roll into the end zone as we check in with Jordan Daigle for the dynamic on QB and coach Thomas Sirk and Scotty Montgomery. Thank you, John. Well, there was a time quarterback Thomas Sirk was unsure if he'd ever play football again after suffering a torn Achilles his senior year at Duke. Coach Montgomery was his former offensive coordinator there. And after he found out about his injury, coach paid him a personal visit. He said he just wanted to give Sirk a hug. He then offered him a, a position here at ECU, and, and he is developing full trust in his new quarterback here. Well, thank you, Jordan. And that's not an easy drive just to pop in. We make that journey from the airport in the Raleigh-Durham area. Pass incomplete. It's about a 90-minute journey. 
Williams. He tried to hook up with Jimmy Williams, and that seems to be who Cirque has the best rapport with in practice. Right. But Williams fell ill last time out against UConn. And the, the great thing about that story is head coach David Cutcliffe of Duke called Scotty Montgomery and said, hey, you know, I think this kid's going to want to play again. I think he's going to be available. And of course, the big dynamic, he ruptured that Achilles not once but twice. It's so rare to see somebody come back and retain the mobility that he has. Open in the flat, bobbled and corral. Darrell Scott. Great Scott with the hurdle. That's always a great idea until the, the guy that you're trying to hurdle doesn't bite. Then you're in the air waiting to get flipped. Nick, excellent read. You talk about Thomas Sirk. He's very much a gym rat kind of a quarterback. Always in the film room, always in the coach's office. Good read on that blitz to get that ball to the running back. 29 yard pickup. It's been very pass heavy for Sirk and company. Steve Baggett, one of his tight ends. Pressure shown. One on one. And Jimmy Williams tugged that flag out. Mazzy Wilkins, who's gone from special teams dynamo to one of their best pass coverage corners, had a man for man. Little tug and hug by Williams, preventing the other Williams from getting by. Back to the pass. Holding. Defense number 23. 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. Wilkins and Williams right down here. So three penalties, 40 yards. Already those three penalties increasing a total that was top five in the FBS. Sirk. Knocked down right back on the horse. Mazzy Wilkins bats it away from the bigger Trayvon Brown. More importantly, a smart move by Mazzy Wilkins. Look at him bat it inside and up. Just in the off chance. If he can't catch it, maybe one of his guys can get the ball inside. I like that move. And he has been the spark for most of their picks this year. He doesn't have the numbers to show for it, but their FBS best 13 interceptions, many of them have come on balls tipped by Wilkins. Sir, looking in Williams' general direction, but throws that one sideline out of bounds. Yeah, he was throwing that one over Jordan Daigle's head down there on the sideline. Heads up. She's ready. ACU has struggled on third down today. They could use the cheers just two of six so far. Entered at 39 percent, 75th in America. USF defensively has been great on third down, second in the league at 31 percent. Husan Howe, third down back is in. He can pass catch and pick up the blitz. They bring four. Howe releases in the flat. The longer look incomplete. Looking for a DeAndre Ferrier, a sophomore. They show six coming, especially turning the two guys in the A gap. Both linebackers in the A gap drop off. And Cirque delivers the ball way too low. Offense is on the field here, Randy. Fourth down and ten. Hey, you, what do you got to lose? You know you're facing an offense on the other side that's going to score a lot of points. Stay on the field, keep your defense off the field, and get this first down. Already five times they've converted on fourth down this year. Pressure on Sirk Hammered as he throws. The ball caught. First down. Davon Grayson ripped out of a tackle that would have had him shy. Woo. How about them apples? How about that for a play? Cirque has a guy running at him full speed. Just barely gets it off. Dakins does a really nice job, but look at that from Cirque. How do you deliver that ball accurately to the outside while you're being brought down? Ronnie Hoggins nearly had the tackle short of the yard again. Tip ball at the line of scrimmage incomplete. Grayson's been his favorite target early four grabs 57 yards. 
Really nice pressure inside. Hector has got a sack already. Now he can add a batted ball to that stat. I guess that's a pass breakup. Getting the nice numbers padded. Sirk on the keep. Oh, he's got room. And there's that fall forward you mentioned earlier. That moves the chains. You know, you're 6'4, you're 220 or so, and you run with your shoulder pads forward. You know, it's not always you talk about a quarterback that's going to be lowering those shoulders when he runs, but Cirque does that and has gotten away with it now in his fifth year of college football. Smart young man, 24 years old, already married, got wed this summer. Carry some of that man straight over the plane for a touchdown. His first rushing score as an ECU Pirate. Boy, the parting of the Bulls. You heard of the running of the Bulls. There's the parting of the Bulls. That whole front seven just gets gashed. Nice job. Good play design by Peterson and that whole offensive staff. And good execution by Sirk. He ran for over 1,000 yards and 16 touchdowns at Duke. It's his first TD on the ground as a Pirate. And the point after good, ECU right back in this game. They go for it on fourth and ten. Sirk did it in the air. He pays it off on the ground. And the Pirates back within the score. USF has its own tie. Sean King, now the running back coach, the only holdover from the Willie Taggart regime. Second round pick by the Bucks back in 1999, led them to the NFC Central Championship game. Lost to the Rams that year, 11 to 6. Filled in with Trent Dilfer, was banged up, and now he helps mentor these Bulls who find themselves in a ball game with a Pirate squad that began the year 0 3. And a booming kick. The Pirates with one timeout. They used one trying to get an incompletion turned into a completion while Quentin Flowers showed what he could do in the air on the Bulls' last possession. Yeah, pretty simple combination of things. If you're USF in this situation right now at 24 17 with almost 10 minutes left in the second quarter, you want this possession to be about two things your offensive line taking this part of the game over and keeping Quentin Flowers clean. If he is throwing, don't let him hit him. If he is throwing, protect him so good. If there's nobody open, he can run. He's run four times for 73 yards. He's also two of six passing for 42. Motion from Valdez Scantling, and they stretch out the Jets. Sweep, Valdez Scantling, the afterburners. His second carry of the year. And he streaks for six. 75 yard touchdown. So two of the Bulls' scores have come on drives of three total yards plus a pick six. That is electric offense. And there is a down pirate. And they do that against a, a fairly soft looking defense. It's Fulp that's down, the safety. There's Scantling. Look at the three linebackers back deep. How they react to the play. You've only got three people in front as D Lyman. You get one good block that happens by McCants. It's gone. It's over. It's through. That's a touchdown from the jump. Part of it by design and part of it by the style of defense that was employed on that first down. That was really nice by the offensive staff for USF. Seventh play of the year of 70 plus yards for the explosive USF Bulls. They've been inefficient at times, but yeah. when they hit the big play, they can do it with just about anybody in America. If Charlie Strong and this this staff, this is a very talented program now that Willie Taggart left them. If they could notch, just ratchet down the mistakes and tighten up on the uh, the discipline side of self discipline. Not crazy discipline, but self-discipline, taking care of your job and not doing too many nutty things and getting penalties. This can be a really, really good team, as you see, because they have that quick strike ability people would kill for. That's a consequential 
limp off the field by Bobby Fult. Most 50 plus yard touchdowns allowed and Fult who's the strong safety he's the he's the safety valve on the back end third on the team in tackles significant help to limp to the sidelines Nadelman the point after well, the Bulls indeed on parade to begin the game some big time scores Marquez Valdez Scantling of the Jets sweep receiver run 75 yards the Bulls have won 31 of the board Just the second carry by a USF wide receiver this year, and it leads to a 75-yard score for Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Monday night, 6 Eastern, our roster of former pro quarterbacks break down week four in the NFL. It's NFL Monday QB, delivered by FedEx only on CBS Sports Network. Seems like every time ECU gets back within striking distance, USF explodes. Trayvon Brown from his one. Oh, and a fierce lick as he's dropped at the 23. USF has dropped over 30 points in this game. It's now 22 consecutive games, scoring 30 plus points. Only Willie Taggart's new digs in Oregon, Oklahoma State, and the Colt Brennan Hawaii team has done more. It's a significant streak, especially considering the number of yards they've run in this one so far so far. What is 180 yards? in less than two quarters and you've scored 31 points in basically a quarter and six minutes yeah it's a pretty impressive performance 23 straight games with 150 or more on the ground for the bulls Cirque to the air a one body control that's a catch trayvon brown go go gadget arms he just threw those things out there they extended an extra six inches or so to get him that catch I thought I saw a brain on the sidelines. <laughs> Jet sweep doesn't work quite as well for Quay Johnson. USF seemed to see that one coming. They probably see it a time or so in practice this week, watching their offense run it, considering how well it went. But nothing kills a play more than penetration, and man, did Love have penetration there. Mike Love entered leading the team in sacks. I loved his uh, I loved his uh, work with the Beach Boys. Who's Mike Love. Love. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if the surfing safari for the Pirates can continue here. Play clock dying. Only one time out, remember. Harassed in the backfield. Surf flips it out. Not a whole lot for Tyshawn Dye. Yeah, they, they're doing a nice job of pressuring Cirque. Cirque's had some big plays. I mean, he's thrown for over about 170 yards so far, but he's got one touchdown, one interception, and he's 10 of 10 of 21. So his percentage is not that high, and they're applying lots of pressure. He connected on his first 11 against UConn in the victory on Sunday. They've struggled on third down. Tip ball incomplete looking for Quay Johnson immediately bracketed as the ball arrived. And they've gone for it on fourth down and double digit yards but this field position not exactly the same. Not back here you're not going to make that move. That was a great close close on the ball another nice play by Mazzy Wilkins. Knocking that ball away that was delivered pretty well. Austin Barnes ready to boot it to Dearness Johnson. Decent hang. And he takes a friendly pirate roll. It'll have the Bulls inside of their 20. You hear that call by the punt team or the punt return team. Peter, Peter, Peter. That's get away from the ball. Quentin Flowers eager to grab the ball. He has been a big playmaker early. He'll have another crack, but we're back.
Bulls on top 31 17 at ECU USF has won a program record nine consecutive games 22 of 26 and the quarterback Quentin Flowers is a giant part of it Bob Jovi sung by the folks in the stands Dearness Johnson the run as we check in on the strong safety Bobby Fulk for ECU with Jordan Second and six. Oh, the gash there again. Dearness Johnson bulldozing to the 38. Those kind of moves, that kind of speed, that's why he's returning some punts. Because he gets that ball and he makes those quick body movements initially. Flowers. Open target off the hands of Valdez Scantling as we check in again with Jordan. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, we saw Bobby Fulp leaving the field, limping off a, a little while ago, and he was seen stretching on the sidelines. It appears to be a left calf cramp. They were giving him fluids. As you all know, ECU cannot afford to lose any, de any more defensive guys, but he should be good to go. And ECU back into a four-man front here. A little more run-oriented defense after that three-man front, three-linebacker look. Gave up a 75-yard touchdown. Already 200 on the ground. Pressure on Flowers. Down. Forward progress thwarted by the big body of Keontae Anderson. The top tackler among the defensive linemen. Anderson coming off the bottom of the screen, 96. That's the best way to pressure a quarterback. You pressure him with his left tackle. Just pushing the, the left tackle, Eric Mays, right into Flowers' lap. Deontay Anderson's mother, Tia, in the stands, the former walk-on. Against that three-man front, Flowers with his feet. Bangs it outside, Quentin Flowers! He has such slippery feel. Any questions why defensive coordinators all over the American Conference hate playing against this guy? Watch this right here. Oh, he's tackled. What was that? What do you even call that? Outside of just incredible God-given ability and an umbel and just an innate sense of being able to go where they aren't. Not enough for a first down, but that's worth the price of the admission right there. Certainly a playmaker. Now Jonathan Hernandez to punt. Quay Johnson. Will it bound out of play? Flag down here. After the play is over, dead ball. Personal foul, necessary roughness. Return team number 28. 15-yard penalty at the end of the run. First down. It's a second call against Husan Howe. I think both have come here on special Correction. teams. Fouls against USF. 15-yard penalty. First down. And that makes it very different. It goes on Trayvon Sands. Coming up, the halftime report powered by Ram Trucks. Adam Zucker, Rick Neuheisel, Brian Jones stand by in our New York studio. We'll have you covered on all the day's highlights, get you prepped for the rest of the action on this busy college football Saturday. This week's AP Top 10 powered by Ram Trucks, Alabama to face Ole Miss later tonight. Georgia, Tennessee on CBS at 3.30 Eastern time. And you must be so pained for the Trojans going down to Mike Leach and company yesterday. Oh, yeah, I, I feel for them. Big upset by Washington That's State great. over USC. And Mike Leach had one of the great post-game quotes talking about places just like Woodstock, only everybody had their clothes on. One minor difference. <laughs> and there's a look at the penalty. Hey, you, you're calling the fair catch. And the ball's not anywhere near you. There's, that's completely unnecessary. That's part of that discipline thing I was talking about earlier. 
Keeper by Cirque as Pinnock's paves a path. Cirque pinballing off contact in the Bulls territory. Watch the hesitation. Hesitate. Let the blocks happen. And just run straight up the field. Great job by Cirque. Excellent execution by the ECU offense. Picks up 15 on the QB keep. An answer here would be gigantic for the Pirates to get back within a touchdown. Darius Pinnix comes for a couple. The freshman getting some reps here. His OC, Tony Peterson, told us that he reminds him a bit of Marion Barber. He had him as the OC at Minnesota. That's not a bad compliment. And he's been that fourth man in the four back rotation this time sniffed out by Deidre Sanat. Yeah, that's what Deidre Sanat does really well. Besides eat blockers and just take them up and let linebackers like Sanchez run, Deidre Sanat has the ability to get that penetration and devour running backs. And Sanat last year led the team 49 tackles among the defensive linemen. His numbers injured this year by his two targeting call ejections. Sirk on third down, flips to the flat. Pinnix steams right into a defender. And Pinnix wills his way for the team's third, third down conversion of the game. Well, if you thought the offensive coordinator, Peterson, spoke lavishly of him before, how about after that run? Right there, lowering that shoulder in the defender and getting that extra two yards. Pulling away at first. But that'll make you a crowd favorite having the ability to lower the shoulder and banging on defenders. Six foot, 225 freshman. The flag down. The flag is right around the 35 near the line of scrimmage. Legal substitution on the offense. Player came into the formation and did not remain in for the play. That is a five yard penalty. It is first down. Scotty Montgomery not happy. So five penalties called on ECU. It's been a disjointed game in that regard, although a lot of those flags have come on specials. And here's that empty formation again here on first and 15. Cirque obliterated as he makes the throw to Quay Johnson. Augie Sanchez, the immediate tackle. But Cirque has been giving up the body and making plays. Pressure is going to come from the outside, from your right on Cirque. Clean. Sautel gets in there. But how impressive is Cirque knowing where the pressure is coming, knowing when the pressure is coming, and hang in just long enough to deliver that ball just right on the hands of the receiver. 17 yard gain, designed run. Sanchez blocked well. And Sir takes a hard shot, just shy of the 15. What pickup by Husan Howell, the running back? We got a bull still down off that contact. There's his quarterback that two games ago had to miss the game because of a concussion. And Thomas comes in there and takes the worst of that lick from the ECU quarterback. Second down of the couple. Surf nine carries, almost 55 on the ground. Needing a couple. There's Sonata again. Some extracurriculars away from the play. So Penix will re enter on a third down and short. What's the look here? Well, third and short, you've got the extra added advantage of having a guy that can run with it that's got a pretty good forward lean to him in Penix, but also your quarterback, Cirque, has proved he can fall forward. He can also dash right on through the stiff arm, the ankle yank, and he's down inside of the 10. Dietrich Nichols, a name we haven't called a lot today. Yeah, you know, Nichols normally the and the nickel back is right in the middle of everything. Good blocking up front, free Cirque, and if not for that Nichols ankle tackle and Yankle yank, it's a touchdown. On first and goal, gets a few. Bruce Hector 
able to swallow up the QB. Issue with the snap here? A little bit wide. You know, so far it's, it's really been a non-factor. We mentioned it earlier, but so far the snaps of McGinn have been pretty solid. 27 seconds, one timeout. ECU used one trying to turn an incompletion into a completion that fell short. ECU asking the student section there in the boneyard to quiet down a little bit so they can call this play. They've got Bag at the tight end and as an extra blocker. Bad snap again. Pinnix thwarted. He's short four seconds, one timeout. Took a long time to get that snap off. They should have had a chance for multiple plays. ECU takes a third and final charge timeout of the half. This is a 30 second timeout. Yeah, another low snap, too, but there's no excuse not to get set and run something pretty quick there. Save yourself some time. So, does this put pressure to have to throw a quick pass that with an incompletion is a field goal even part of the conversation? Granted that USF is 31 on the board. Well, if you know where this if this is a full four seconds, but for all you know, this is like three and three and a tenth. It might be just about to, to click over to three seconds. I'm not sure what exactly. I think it's an either or. It's run a, run a play or kick a field goal. I don't think you have time for both. The ECU breaks huddle. USF. Won the toss and deferred. The Bulls will have the ball to begin the second. Puts even more pressure. Needing three yards for a score. The freshman Pinnix at tail. Cirque has been their top runner. The QB flips it out. His tight end. Steve Baggett. Touchdown Pirates. Remember the old jump pass Tim Tebow sort of made famous at Florida. Well Baggett's going to come out of here and come right down into the end zone. I wouldn't call this so much a jump pass because he was on the ground by the time he threw it. That was a great call. Totally caught USF off guard. Excellent momentum play going into the halftime. What momentum for the Pirates blown out in their first three games, including a loss to an FCS foe, but facing the flagship team in the American, they put 24 on the board against a Bulls team that allows a shade more than 17 per game. We are through one half, a 31 to 24 score. After the break, the halftime report powered by Ram Trucks. You're watching College Football on CBS Sports Network, presented by the Home Depot. And the host Pirates have made it a game for the nation's number 18. A one-score game in Greenville at halftime. USF got off its slow start to find pay dirt early. And the Bulls have a one touchdown advantage at one and three ECU. We're back with more in a bit. Third quarter about to get underway from Greenville. 31-24, USF has the advantage. ECU, Randy Cross had only scored 20-plus points in one game entering today. That was the win against UConn, already 24 on the board. As we take a look at the breakdown, our first-half stats presented by Humana. Do you like offense, I ask you? If you like offense, you're going to be nuts about the second half because the first half was nothing but offense. One team throwing the ball extremely effectively. In ECU and on the running side, USF was gashing these defenses. I mean, everything that they tried to put out there, three-man front, front, four-man front, 50 look, everything, they were running for miles. Let's break down some of the highlights from the first. The pick six helped get it going. Well, that little tip up into the air just went right into Augie Sanchez's hands, which was great for USF. 
And then Scantling on this reverse little speed sweep was blocked perfectly and executed well by him. Then the old jump pass for the first touchdown of the career of that young pirate tight end back. Steven Baggett with that first career TD, the senior. The USF won the coin toss and deferred, so the Bulls will own the football to begin the second stanza. Caleb Pratt handles kickoff duties for ECU. Tyree McCants, rather electric wide receiver. And no chance for a run back here as we check in with Jordan Daigle on the sidelines. Who had word with each head coach. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I caught up with both coaches at the half, and Coach Strong said we cannot continue to give up the big plays on defense. They gave up a big fourth down conversion. In terms of his offense, he said they cannot stop us. So he's not worried about that. They just need to continue getting off the field and letting their defense take over. As for Coach Montgomery, he said he said they have a lot of confidence in our guys and we just need to execute in terms of defensive coordinator i saw him encouraging his guys saying we are still in this keep it going i appreciate that that's robert prunty the more recently minted defensive coordinator who has a ton of experience did so at cincinnati marquez valdez scantling who had the long touchdown run gets that grab break down the numbers for usf touchdowns Early, a couple of punts on the back end. Punter's well rested. O line's going to get a chance here to take this game over. Cannon Gibbs contains Dearness Johnson, but he does move the chains. How have you seen that battle up front unfold? Well, you, you can tell USF is starting to get more comfortable up front. This is their third game, this group kind of starting together. They're looking like they're diagnosing what they're looking at much quicker. Now they're in a four man front Eastern Carolina East Carolina is so they're seeing different looks three man fronts 50 looks Flowers decides to give it away Johnson has nothing driven back Mike Myers as they go deeper on that defensive line the primary point of contact. Yeah, we've talked about USF being the defense that's going to stuff you inside and make you bounce. It's exactly what ECU did make that play bounce outside and have the speed to hem him in once he gets out there. Making Taylor references. I like it. You're going next level here. Flowers. Lawrence Taylor. <laughs> Long look. Leaping grab. Darnell Solomon, the freshman. How about Darnell Solomon on this play? He was out there. As a starter today earlier, getting a chance. You haven't seen Flowers compete a lot of passes, but the ones he has have been pretty impressive. 33 on that big strike, and now Dearness Johnson right through the teeth of the defense for a dozen. Here's USF running tempo. Johnson waits and explodes. He gets about five. And they'll stay with this tempo if they can gash it for five like that. It's going to limit substitution that last quick play. So they got one one player one substitution made. Johnson 11 carries just south of 50 yards. Flowers keeps. He is shifty but this time a team effort contains him. No gain. That was Chris Love, the last guy on the field in that substitution on the last play. That remained backside, stayed disciplined, and was able to make that tackle on Flowers. Seven plays, 61 yards. One of the downsides of moving quickly and running fast plays. Might get the quick a kick fast too. Flowers, the long stare to his sideline. Valdez Scantling. A soft man on the bottom of the screen. Thinking bigger, thinking end zone touchdown. Tyree McCants with the grab at USF right down the field to open the second. 
Well, if you're going to challenge a quarterback and say beat you with your arm, beat us with your arm. That's exactly what Flowers did on that one play. He was able to take advantage of those good running plays and deliver that ball perfectly right about waist high and led McCants for that touchdown. Tyree McCants with his first grab of the day and he takes it for a score. Point after is good. Quentin Flowers they wanted to make him beat them with his arm. He does that to the Pirates the second underway with another TD. Let's check in with the Chick-fil-A fan cam to see what the fans are up to today. Pretty feisty tailgating scene here at ECU. You know how to get ready and prepare for a game. Willing a path to the 28 as we take a look at the possessions for the Pirates in the first half. Tell you what, what resiliency by this Pirates offense, this Pirates football team, but especially the offense, because when haven't they taken the field down? I mean, it seems from the jump, USF had their had that first possession and whack. They think brought that thing down for a touchdown and Cirque and company have been kind of under the gun every possession but they've had an answer. Off to a one and three start that one win came Sunday a weather shifted game against UConn and the quick hitter off target to Husan Howe off his hand. Husan Howe almost batted that ball up high enough that Augie Sanchez the linebacker trying to cover him coming out of the backfield almost got a look at another interception. Sanchez got the first pick six that USF has enjoyed on the year. Chasing that tackle record set by Kavika, Kavika Mitchell, that inside linebacker for the Bulls back in the day. Wide open target in the middle of the field. Spin out of the tackle. Davon Grayson chucked out by Jamon Thomas. Another poor job of tackling and it yields 51 yards. Grayson 200 yards plus last week off 11 catches takes a little one and makes it a big one. He won't be tackled. Nothing but arm efforts by the defense and that results in a big big play. Five grabs now over the century mark. Edge pressure shown. Oh they sweep in on both sides. And Barry Howe in the backfield. Bruce Hector swallows him up. Seems like the majority of the time they've had effective running out of this offense has been their co co their quarterback, Cirque. Because USF has taken some chances and gotten some penetration and stifled many of the efforts to run. ECU entered 115th in America running the football. Nico Sautel has been living on the near edge. Drops in coverage here. Oh, sir. Touched by Sanat off target to Jimmy Williams. Flag down. And that was Sautel trying to cover there. And he had to hold to do right, it. It's holding pass. on him. Holding. holding. Defense number 54. 10 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Fifth penalty on the Bulls. Go easy. Go well, you easy. know it's the blitz. You know you're going to have to get rid of that ball pretty quickly. Sir got rid of it. We didn't do it accurately. But Sautel had to use a little grabbage instead of coverage. That's a technical term, right? Yes. Off the edge, how? Augie Sanchez on high and some help from down low. Let's take a look at the latest laundry in that tub. Here's Sautel right there. He's going to be dropping into this flat. Showing the blitz drop into the flat just sort of grab the the first thing in an off color jersey a little too far down the field for contact or grab. Blitz comes they pick it up quick fire to Jimmy Williams Oh, the second hit popped him 
Greg Reeves defensive end who had dropped back some gave the bigger lift. Well luckily for Williams Reeves was, was spinning him to the ground by the time that second tackle came watch him spin and that's when the second tackle tried to get in there didn't get much wood on him. five of eleven on third down ECU got the score right before the break trying to respond to USF beginning the second stanza with a TD keeper by surf felt like they saw that coming and with a spot he still got the first down yeah, not only does he tend to fall forward he will not hesitate to lower the shoulder for the tough yards that was all the quarterback deciding he wanted that first down and we asked Scotty Montgomery who's the only coach that he's known helping him on the sidelines for every play of his collegiate career Duke and ECU he said he's grown as a game manager being able to recognize when to throw it away when to push for more pushes end zone drop ball touchdown in the hands and to the ground for Davon Grayson oh Grayson has that ball put right on his chest plate of his shoulder pads. I mean that's the hazard if you're playing defense and you never look back. You don't know the ball's coming if you're the defensive back. Wilkins had a chance to make another play but he never saw the ball. Second down. Cirque sees something. Is he checking out of a bad play to get into a good one. Keeps it giant sea of space. And invites the harm again. That'll move the chains. First and goal. What he saw was a blitz coming, and the blitz was blocked and dealt with by that left side of the offensive line. It extremely effectively, enabling the quarterback to get plenty of open spaces. In this area, he flipped it out to the tight end, Steve Baggett, for a score as time expired. In the second quarter, little jump pass last time. Let's see if he invokes the bunny hop again. Adjust Pinnix, the freshman running back, has nothing. Kevin Bronson, part of the pile. It'll be a loss of a yard. So, some personnel change. Jimmy Williams back out to the field. That's a wide receiver they want to integrate more, but he fell incredibly ill against UConn. Apparently a pregame ritual that he'll he'll lose his lunch before the game but it just kept on going and he lost 20 pounds in a week. Penix spins off contact he's short down at the one yard line third and goal. Almost looked like he was going to spin out of another one like he did earlier lowering that shoulder. First thing they hit was his backside. Left cheek, left cheek, right cheek down. Danny Actually, it was the left cheek that moves down, but the right was <laughs> done. Third and goal from the one. Sir Keep. Pinnix leads the way, and Sir smothered. He gets nothing. Man, that defensive line is good for USF. They're they're tough to run right in the middle. They go right at them. You see, look at the, the bow back. That D line just hit that ECU offensive line. And they were all four guys holding these linemen out at arm's length. Timeout, ECU. ECU takes their first charge timeout of the half. This is a 30 second timeout. So the 12th play of the drive to come. Remember, they put themselves in a tough spot timeout wise in the first half and had an all or nothing play that yielded a touchdown right before the break. This basically means you're definitely going for it. Keep right? in mind, last week against UConn, they got ahead, ECU did, and then the defense was on the field a lot in that second half, and they kind of got gassed. Great side benefit of this 12 play drive, which hopefully ends in a touchdown for ECU's sake, is your defense has been on the sideline getting water, getting some air, and getting a chance to really take a deep breath and try to diagnose this Bulls offense that's been just shredding. Now they were up 27 to 7 on UConn of that game and held on on a missed field goal. Here's the flip to Baggett, the seniors' first career touchdown that concluded the first half. And that was with four seconds to go in the game. So that was either going to be a touchdown 
or they get no points. So here's the offense out of a called timeout, 12th play of the drive for ECU. Power formation, tight end in the backfield. Surf keeps, leaps, touchdown! His second rushing score of the day. You've got Baggett in the backfield. You've got Pinnock in the backfield. Baggett gets penetration. Pinnock gets penetration. But look at that ball stretched out over the goal line. The body didn't get close, but the reach with the ball for Cirk scored that touchdown. They are two for two on fourth down tries today, and Thomas Cirk has ignited it both times. Point after good. If you're Eastern Car East Carolina, you want to make a memory, you want to make momentum, play like this, take these chances and have it pay off. Tomorrow on the NFL on CBS, no love lost. Steelers battle the Ravens. Then another divisional matchup. The Raiders head to mile high to take on the Broncos. Double dip kicks off with the NFL today, presented by Southwest Airlines at 12 Eastern. And Scotty Montgomery is ties with Denver and Oakland. Undrafted out of Duke, the wideout played three years for the Broncos. Never saw action in a regular season game with the Raiders and still has regular dialogue with Mike Tomlin, coached with Mike Tomlin with the Pittsburgh Steelers, Antonio Brown, Heinz Ward among the wideouts that he mentored, and also Thomas Sirk as the QB both the Duke and now at ECU. And Thomas Sirk, two rushing scores after a 12 play, 73 yard drive, five minutes, 17 seconds chewed up. A great kick, but should that score have counted? Watch the play clock on the fourth down and goal snap. One, nada, no snap so far. I'd say somebody missed something. No, well, ECU got that score that keeps them within reasonable pace of the Gaudy Bulls, who have scores on eight of their last ten drives, along with ECU points have been had. Eighty percent of the last ten possessions. And the ECU defense, decent job of denial. Yeah, we've seen last possession and now this one starting off a few plays where the ECU defense has shown a sign of life against the run. ECU's defensive numbers just horrific entering the game. Passing defense, second to last. Rush defense, 123rd out of 129. Scoring defense, second worst in America. Flowers. To Valdez Scantling. He's had a pretty big day. Uh, twisted out of bounds by the second man in, Bobby Fulk. Flowers has a flaw throwing. It's his accuracy, but in this case, extremely accurate and zipped out about eyeball high right at the first down marker. Good job by Scantling of holding that thing high and tight and thinking ball the whole time. 14 yards, Scantling, four grabs to lead the team. Darius Tice, who has a more straightforward mentality, bowls a path for about five. The USF OC Sterling Gilbert told us that while he did watch tape of his players that he inherited, remember USF has gone through a different OC and DC in the last three years, including this one. He needed to see with his eyes what Quinton Flowers could bring. Darius Tice. Second level, pummels the defender. And that three and three years makes what this offense has done the last couple of years all the more remarkable. The key here is very nice running, but it's set up. The, the offensive line gets him into the backfield, into the defensive backfield before he's hit. Flowers over the top. Valdez Scantling tumbled on his own. And the O-line had some trouble in their opener against San Jose State when a bad snap was an issue for Quinton Flowers. He bobbled, tapped the ball to himself, and was able to rip off on a 39, a game that you had in week zero right. of this campaign, a double-digit run 
for a first down. It was then that Sterling Gilbert said, man, this is a playmaker at QB. It made him a believer in and what he had at quarterback. That the, the coach players believe in the coaches. USF averaging nine yards per rush. Flowers a big part of that today. They go back to Tice right into the teeth of the defense, and he carries Keontae Anderson and some friends to the 33, gain of seven. We hear the, the term run pass op option, RPOs. USF is doing a lot of the RPO. They got three receivers to the bottom of the screen. They're, do they're down here acting like it might be a screen. And that keeps three defenders on that side. You run inside, and it's just less guys to, to tackle, like here. Quinton Flowers able to just bounce it outside, easily picks up the first. It's sparkling how much room can be available for Flowers and how readily he reads it and feels it. Well, it's where there is room that he goes to. I mean, he has an innate feel for space. Because you, you jump on side for that right side run, how in, the, how in goodness name do you know that big hole is back left? Flowers fires. Finds Tyree McCants. Flowers with a seventh completion. That percentage starting to come up some here in the second. And there's a pirate down. Williams, middle linebacker. Flowers is trying, starting to dial that accuracy up. He, he grounded a few plays early. Throwing the ball, but man, he's been money the last few he's thrown. And Jordan Williams, who his head coach Scotty Montgomery called the most important player on defense this week, able to diagnose, communicate for the defense what USF was bringing. He called the former Division II man at Shaw, who walked on and has become their top tackler, integral. You know, and as you can tell, too. They got the play clock running here. No, no, no fair huddling on the sideline when a guy supposedly hurt. Ninth play of the drive here for Flowers and Company. Darius Tice chopped down at the eight. Gets only a couple. The USF last year had a field stretcher in Rodney Adams at wide receiver who could also do it on the ground. They would integrate jet sweeps often for him. Right. As we've seen, Scantling already go 75 with one, but it was a regular part of their diet in that offense. It feels, though, like they're still feeling each other out. The personnel that exists, yeah. the new coaching staff. Very much so. They're not they have not been a fast start offense either the last couple of years and that's because of that offensive change. Tice right into the meat of the defensive line earns the four gain of four. And Charlie Strong at age 57. whose first coaching job was in the state of Florida GA with the Gators at several runs with the Gators in the SEC. And Willie Taggart, the key for him was recruiting in Florida. One of the great things about this job for Charlie Strong, he knows that state like the back of his hand. Bunch trips. Flowers looking that way. Valdez Scantling touchdown. His third receiving TD of the year. He's also got one on the ground today. You want to see some happy feet? Kind of like the kids movie the little penguin Scantling happy feet look at him dot those things. That was a beautiful job by Scantling. Nice recognition by flowers and how about the protection to just be able to stand back there and survey as those patterns were crossing. Multiple passing TDs plus one on the ground for flowers tack on the point after. 11 plays, 75 yards, more methodical from the Bulls this time around, and they stretch their lead, 45 on the board. 45-31, Quinton Flowers' team with the lead at ECU as we examine today's Geico difference makers. Flowers, Randy, 2 of 7 passing in the first half, 42 yards. He's 6 of 7 already in the second for 90. He tightened up his accuracy. He tightened up his delivery. And he also got some pretty good protection from his guys up front. Thomas Sirk also handling himself incredibly well for ECU. And he's set to have the ball back. Chris Love 
looking for field position. Has it around the 23. Ball popped loose, but he was down first. Here's a look at Thomas Sir. Well, we talked about key to the game was going to be Cirque and destroy. Well, Cirque has destroyed him with a run, with his arm, with his feet, with a little jump pass. And on his last touchdown, a little bit of head and arm. The head thought of reaching over for the goal line to make that a score because he was stopped short, but the arm got out there to make that score possible. The number's great in the last couple of games. He's the reigning player of the week offensively in the league after his career passing day in the survival him? against UConn. Jimmy Williams dropped ball, had a big cushion against Devin Abraham and couldn't hold on to it. Wow. That would have been a way to start this drive off. These offenses, nine scores in the last 11 possessions. You get a nice big drop, a nice big play like that delivered right in your mitt. You're Jimmy Williams. You have got to catch that ball. Second and ten. In dire need of points to try to keep pace. Incomplete, harassed in the backfield. Greg Reeves chasing the QB. You know, part of that too is you saw Williams drop that ball. This is a guy that's lost 20 pounds the last couple of weeks because of stomach problems, flu like symptoms. You know, how much practice has the guy gone through? They designed stuff in this offense for him the last couple of games, and if you can't be out there on the field practicing, it's hard to kind of all of a sudden pop into the game and have your hands be perfect. And practice a little lesson this week with a Sunday game. Who's on how in on third down? Cirque hit by Sanad, a long launch, dangerous, tipped, nearly intercepted, then nearly caught by the intended target. Pinballed his back, I guess. That was a, a pass that Cirque probably as it left his hand thought maybe I shouldn't throw this. He gets drilled by Sanat. Ball goes up. It looks 100% like an interception. And it goes from 100% interception to bat it up in the air. Almost a little bit of all of that Alabama Georgia game a couple years back. Remember that when the DBs bounced it in the air and wide receiver catches it in stride? With the back to Barnes, the punter, they deny. That almost El looked Kana like. Dillon, the tight end. It almost looked like he had to kick it into his up back's back. Watch 50 on the, the left side. He just kicked it right into his up back. He wasn't drilled back very much. He just kicked it low, right low into the middle. It went right off his up back's back. Who do you credit for the block there? Your own guy? I assume the closest man to the football. And he'll take it. Thank you. Quentin Flowers will take this field position. Getting low to Ernest Johnson. Already has a score today. This will be how you put a sense of urgency in the pirate offense you score here if you're if you're Quentin Flowers and the Bulls you're up by 14 just don't guess Tyree Owens the Juco transfer originally a major conference recruit at West Virginia Dispatched of the Ernest Johnson now third and three for USF. Yeah, Tyree Owens really sort of the stout guy up front did a nice job using some quickness to get into a wide open position to blunt that Charlie Strong run. Flowers the look. He's been frustrated some. Trying to learn the new offense this year. Long look, one on one. Did he get the feet in? Incomplete. Tyree McCants unable to bring it in clean. Not a bad pass. 
by Flowers. Great protection. And he lays that thing right out there. But that's some defense. That's using the sideline as your friend. And it's not it's not pushing, it's not holding. It's just knowing if you keep squeezing and squeezing into the sideline and you're sucking, eventually the guy's got to run himself out of bounds. 28 yard try from Emilio Nadelman. He's hit from 37 today. And he makes good. So a couple of field goal makes for the senior. A punt blocked on friendly fire off the back of defensive tackle Sean James. More points for the Bulls. Highest scoring day of the year for USF, and that's through three quarters as we take a look at today's Bud Light game summary. USF doing it on the ground, nearly 300 yards rushing. Total yard at GCU has been there, but a blocked punt, a pick six, right. and some big plays for USF. Yeah, that turnover turned in. It was a touchdown. And for all intents and purposes, that self-blocked punt is also a turnover. Neal in the end zone for a touchback. No quarter, the flag unfurled. That's the more recent tradition begun here at ECU at the start of the fourth quarter, that there will be no quarter, no prisoners. Yeah, that's well played. I think I, I like that. That's a, that's a fun thing to involve the crowd is, mainly in the band and the student section over there. Now ECU. Down 48 31. The offense has largely done its job. In fact, the Thomas Sirk pick six went off the hands of one of his own receivers. Blitz comes. Knocked down. Outstanding defense. Natron Culpepper, the freshman. What angle to sweep in and bat it away. So reach uh, actually completely around and in front of the receiver. He'd almost run by him to do it, reaching around to get that ball to knock it away. USF tops in the FBS in interceptions, turnovers gained, turnover margin. Active hands, part of it. Cirque looking long. Davon Grayson too long. That's unnecessary. Contact. Grayson believes that was inappropriate, but our field judge says incomplete, incidental. Mark Windham, the field judge, was right there. Clearly uncut, but just because just, just you're there doesn't mean you really see it. Case in point. Scotty Montgomery patrolling the sidelines. 15th third down conversion try already. Sirk. He's got it. Oh, he's going to be wow. short by about two here. Wow, they've got him back by the 33-yard line. And this is, I believe, Randy, the first time on one of his many occasions today that he hasn't tried to fall forward. Yeah, Did he just not know where the stick was? No, I think he lost track. Because he starts to go down into a semi-side slide. They take it into a effect of being a slide, being a foot for a slide. That's why I got marked back where it was. So now it's fourth and two. They've gone for it twice on fourth down. They've converted both times. And Cirque made the play on both occasions. Blitz is on. Augie Sanchez in the backfield. Tipped incomplete. Looking for Jimmy Williams. Again, it was Natron Culpepper. And the Pirates turned over on downs by USF. Yeah, that's a bust that goes on Cirque. He's limping a little bit off of that pass. But uh, that was really him sliding. Good defensive play, knocking that thing away. And yeah, the blitz on rushes him some. Might have also banged him up. Time now for Experian protecting the pocket. You know, John, it's not all about protecting the quarterback when he's passing. Sometimes you're doing a great job protecting the pocket for the running quarterback. And Quentin Flowers has gotten plenty of that protection in wide open spaces from his offensive teammates. And at this second half, he has gotten exemplary protection in the pocket for his passes. His 86 rush yards tie him for the most by any player in the game with 
the ECU quarterback, Thomas Sirk. Marquez Valdez Scantling already has a 75 yard touchdown run. This time only gets about five plus. More of a garden variety speed sweep. Ho hum. Yeah, just being, five. you know, speed across the field and then turn it up at the end for a little game. And Flowers has crossed 9,000 total yards on his career this game. Sails that one over Tyree McCants. Also has a shot at 3,000 career rushing yards. Remember that last year he had 1,500 yards on the ground. And the Pirates have allowed over 1,000 yards total in their last two home games, including the blowout against Virginia Tech. Yeah, Robert Prunty, the defensive coordinator, he'll tell you up front. He's not going to make excuses. He's not going to be negative. You know, he's just like his coach Scotty Montgomery. They say we're going to get this thing right. Quint Flowers is the same. A ton of room for Flowers. Looked like a flag came down too. Did you get an illegal chop block, illegal uh, cut block? Now we did see someone pop up in the air. <laughs> yeah, when you see heads disappearing that quickly, it's usually not good for somebody. Personal foul. Illegal block below the waist. Offense number six. 15 yard penalty. Third down. Darius Tice, the running back. And the new rule on cut block is pretty easy. Now stop it when he gets there right now. You've, he's got to be facing you right here. He's got to be facing that way. If he's facing this way and you're hitting into the sides of his legs, legs like that, that's what now is illegal. You've got to be hitting into the front of his legs, not into the side of his legs. So third and 16. One of the rule changes on the landscape of college football, Flowers. Looking longer for Valdez Scantling, who protects flag is down. That is a catch plus the flag. That's one of the advantages of being a big dog like Scantling, Valdez Scantling, 6'5, 210. You can bang around back there and still have body composure. Pass interference. Defense, number eight. The penalty has declined. The result of the play. First down. Even with the illegal contact from Bobby Fulp, he still makes this 26 yard grab. Well, he never takes his eyes off the ball. And don't discount the fact that we've seen Quentin Flowers ECU deliver takes a second the ball charge out of the half. really well in the second this half. This is a 30 he's second good protection, timeout. And his accuracy has been spot on. ECU calls timeout. Critical look here in the red zone for USF if there's any prayer of ECU getting back into this ball game they've got to deny here. Yeah I mean this is this is that point you know those old Roadrunner cartoons where they're going side by side you just see the the wolf was just the coyote right next to him all of a sudden you'd hear that beep beep. This is a beep beep protection a possession for USF because if they get a touchdown here that's when all you see is smoke and taillights from this point on. Well, hopefully, if uh, ECU is going to employ the services of any acne related products, they work as advertised. They never did. Why should they now? <laughs> well, Scantling has been a big target. Six grabs, 94 yards, two rushes for 80, including that 75 yard scamper for a TD. They've been more run oriented, though in the red zone it feels today. Tice cuts it up and plows into Jordan Williams. And that's why they've been more run oriented up front is they've blocked significantly better. And granted, ECU is a good team to run against, but they've taken advantage of. Second and three, go right back to the well. Tice gets the push, and he's just short behind William Atterbury on the right side of the line. They'll go right up on the line of scrimmage here. Yeah, Rice and Smith and that whole right side. Wow. Touchdown, Bulls. Again to the right side. Norman and Atterbury rough at the center position. We've seen a little bit of wigs even in there, too. That's a beautiful job by the right side. 
Taking the line of scrimmage. Moving a hole. And then you got a running back that basically Sutton tried to step up to make that tackle. Didn't have the leverage and paid for it dearly because he was pushed immediately back into the end zone. Darius Tice is team leading seventh rushing touchdown. Six different Bulls have scored touchdowns today, including linebacker Augie Sanchez. Extra point good. A USF, its most explosive scoring game of the season. Hanging 55 on a conference phone. Meet me. Darius Tice, the score, the Bulls, their best scoring day since November of 2015. College football continues next. UTEP takes on the Army Black Knights in West Point, 7 Eastern. Air Force faces New Mexico. Cap it off number 19, San Diego State, playing host to Northern Illinois at 1030, all right here on CBS Sports Network. Top three rushing quarterbacks by yardage all run the option, including Ahmad Bradshaw with Army West Point. Quint Flowers top 10 in the FBS ranks. No chance for ECU to run that one back. Let's follow up on your keys, Randy. Well, we talked about talked about these early in the game, both offensively and defensively. Seven tackles for loss for the, for the Bulls against this offense has been something. Very effective running and talk about efficiency passing. Great game so far for Quentin Flowers. Cirque and destroy. Cirque's been the man. Hasn't had much help. Make Flowers throw. And not so much. He did. And he's hurt you with it pretty bad along with his feet. Let's see if Cirque can respond. Blitz is on. Howe picks it up. Bad ball behind the leaping Davon Grayson. Only able to edge it with one hand. They've been silent so far in the second. There's a look at Darius Tice who had the last score. Remember he was lost last year when USF was trying to find its rhythm. Week four against Florida State he suffered a season ending some thought could be career ending injury because he had played in four games at that point and was granted the sixth year to come back. He said that he's just so grateful to be playing period. He's glad to split carries and he and Dearness Johnson have become best friends in the backfield. Yeah, he's got some nice power to him when he runs, and that's the funnest part about watching him. It's not all about Player speed down. and wiggle. Slow to get up. Des Barmore, the right guard backup. Getting some time today as McGinn has moved from guard to center. John Spellacy, the true freshman they adore, injured in practice this week, out today. The third down, a familiar situation for ECU. Six of 15 today. Four man rush gets pressure. Cirque just gets it off as he's lit up. And Hussan Howe has the 35. That'll move the chains. Great read by Cirque getting the pressure and just flipping that thing out at the last second. Deidre Sanat. Bruce Hector, they've been doing a lot of the dirty work up front. They've been slimming that pocket. They've been freeing each other up. A lot of twists and games up front with the, from those three rushers. Another edge blitz. Sirk over top of the pressure. Finds Quay Johnson. He's yanked down to the 43. Augie Sanchez dispatches of the target. So here's second and short. Down big at home fourth quarter. Take a shot here. This is the this is the down second and short that you could you could rationalize it but every down is second and short to this offense right now down this much to this offense on the other side 24 points keep it on the ground and they're short by about a half yard. Well they don't take the shot and they still fall short of the first third down to come after that physical collision. Darius Pinnocks will come on to spell how it's normally the inverse on third down but needing less than a yard it's the bigger freshman. That was the equivalent of taking a shot down the field you got to run on third down anyway.
keeper by Cirque rather pensively approaches the line. This will depend upon the spot. It looks like they're going to give it to him. Yeah, he got it. And the reason he the reason he looked pensive, he saw nothing but purple. Purple will make you pensive when you're running the ball straight ahead. Because you're supposed to see either grass or maybe some white here and there as far as the other guy's jersey. His alignment were getting pushed back into his back. Trayvon Brown backfield. showed some limp as he just jogged off the field. Penix is in there as a slot receiver as they go empty. Incomplete. It feels like USF is bringing more and increasingly varied pressure later in the game. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to love what they're doing defensively because they're not doing a whole lot of anything the same every time. Brian G John Marie, the offense defensive coordinator, has mixed it up really well. He's giving you looks like this, where it looks like three down linemen. By the time the ball's snapped, you're getting five rushers. Some flinching before the snap flags out. Sir takes a shot. Dietrich Nichols playing center field. But the flag remains back at the 40. Offside. Defense number 41. Five yard penalty. Second down. There's Reeves. They've used Reeves all over. In this case, he's basically a defensive end. He jumps into the neutral zone, gives Cirque and company that free play. Seven penalties for USF. That's still below average. Fifth most flags in the FBS, averaging 10 on a per game basis. Cirque <laughs> looking long again. Flag out. Tip ball on a 50 50. And that one brought in. Seemed like simultaneous possession, but Mindrian Vines, the freshman, gets in their first first grab of the year. You look at that, that jumble of three players when the official waved his hands over his head like okay we got a ball down reception you almost wanted to go Pass down the right well, who? defense number 27 that penalty is declined resolve the play first down 34 yards the tug came early as far as the pass interference and the theft came late Sirk keeps, sheds the first hit, but the second swarm gobbles him up. Bruce Hector in there, along with Josh Black. It's been a bit of a swarming team mentality from this defense that with a lot of the same personnel has such better numbers under Brian John Marie, who said that they're getting about a half dozen NFL scouts on a weekly basis looking at players on both sides of the football, but many looks at defense these days too. Well, you wouldn't normally at a game is 55 31 think you're looking at much defense. Sirk intercepted. Looking for Davon Grayson, picked off. Mazzy Wilkins says thank you very much. And they salt their FBS lead in picks. Another interception. Mazzy Wilkins didn't tip this one in the air for somebody else to get like he's done so often this year. He catches that one and plays wide receiver with a tap dance. Time now for Do Project Smarter, brought to you by the Home Depot and the smart move of integrating Marquez Valdez Scantling. I think that was a pretty smart idea to hit him on the speed play here, and let's see if he can run 75 yards untouched, unimpeded, barely without breaking a deep breath. And that touchdown catch in the back of the end zone delivered perfectly by Quentin Flowers. Work smarter, not harder. 174 yards on his eight total touches. The Ernest Johnson inviting the harm to the 25. The Bulls have the ball thanks to their second pick of the game. They now have multiple interceptions in every game this year, leading the country in picks the latest in the end zone, taken away by Mazzy Wilkins. And this is the proper pace to play with. If you're them, you're, you're ahead. You're ahead now. You've got this 24-point lead. Don't be in a hurry to do anything. Run clock and run the ball, or maybe take a score if it presents itself. Johnson tracked down by Devon Sutton, the hybrid pirate backer 
used secondary man. For more on Quentin Flowers and his unique tale, let's go back to Jordan Daigle downstairs. Thank you, John. Well, USF quarterback Quentin Flowers has been faced with overcoming the tragic loss of his father, mother, and oldest brother. And shockingly, tragedy has struck again for this beloved young man. Sadly, Quentin informed me this week one of his closest aunts on his mother's side passed away unexpectedly three weeks ago. Before every game after the coin toss, Quentin will jog to the end zone and take a kneel. There, he will pay tribute to his lost family members. With the loss of his aunt, he will now cross his heart four times times and blow four kisses to his angels in the sky. Well, appreciate that Jordan and if there's any one person in the building that relates to it best it might be ECU defensive coordinator Robert Prunty who lost his father when he was 10 years old his mother when he was a sophomore in high school lost his brother a year ago yesterday part of the decision making process to come to ECU and to be closer to family and said he would try to seek out flowers after the game today. Johnson veered out of bounds and Robert Prunty told us that he's sure that Quentin Flowers has had mentors helping to guide him much like he did when he was playing youth football riding in the car with parents of teammates that he knew were going home to enjoy their families and he was going home to his grandmother there's no foul for illegal block in the back the block is from the side yeah, there's always somebody. It's a mentor. It's a coach. It's it's a it's an aunt. It's a grandmother. It's a neighbor. Somebody steps up and becomes sort of that that anchor spot in a kid's life, and everyone needs one. And Flowers, one of the stars of this league and of college football, finding that internal strength. Now trying to find his receiver. Flag out. Looked like the hold came just as Tice was releasing. Pass interference, defense number 42. Automatic first down. Devon Sutton. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's a touchdown. If that's not a, a touchdown saving penalty, there's Tice. Watch him come through. If you don't grab him right there and contact him right there across the chest, I think it's going to be a touchdown. The USF has its highest scoring day since it put 65 on the board November the 20th of 2015 against Cincinnati. Looking to break the 60 point threshold for the first time since. Tice. Help down near the marker at the 10 yard line. They now have like 514 yards offense in case you were curious the record at USF is 680 yards they set two weeks ago against the Big Ten team Illinois. Wins at San Jose State versus Stony Brook blew out Illinois and annihilated Temple two Thursdays ago. The Ernest Johnson. Two different hitters could not deny touchdown Bulls. Well, how about Dearness Johnson? He, he's the speed back. He's the quick shifty guy. He gives you a little lower in the shoulder and a little power going into the end zone. That's a nice job. Excellent blocking up front by USF. There is a flag down. It's two attempted at tackles getting hit After from the, the side ain't going to work. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense number 11. 15 yard penalty will be set on the try. The result of the play is a touchdown. Marquez Valdez Scantling. And that's a little alarming, right? So USF has this game in hand, but a lot of these, you call them discipline related penalties, continue to emerge. And it's composure and discipline. It's just, they're unnecessary. They're holding you back from being as good as you possibly can be. And this will thrust back Emilio Nadelman. 35 yard extra point. And it's no good. Just his fourth career extra point miss with over 130 attempts. The Ernest Johnson that is number 11 his second first. rushing score of the day. The man called clutch as USF with over 60 on the scoreboard.
football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Dr. Pepper, the one fans crave. By Experian, identity protection has a new identity. And by Chick-fil-A, start game day strong with the new breakfast hash brown scramble bowl. Charlie Strong, Scotty Montgomery locking horns here today. The former head man of the Longhorns, the former Duke Blue Devil and assistant. Total yardage, a wide disparity in the second as USF has pulled away up 30. Why not take a chance, right? Chris Love. A stiff arm and helped out of play. And really, when you think about. You've, you've given up 61 points. You scored 31. Charlie Strong wasn't running up the score. People are concerned with that kind of thing these days. That was running primarily. Got them that touchdown. And also when you look at it from the standpoint of, you know, they're ranked 18th in the country. They've got a, they're one of those teams that have to show people where, where they're out. Show people how much better they are. Gardner Minshew. Who was the starter enters in QB Thomas Sirk's day is done. Keep it on the ground Tyshawn die. Overwhelmed Juwan Brown part of the pile at the 28. Dearness Johnson has broken the century mark for USF. The payoff on that last drive he's now the fourth 100 yard rusher that ECU has allowed this year that includes 265 by Cardone Johnson of FCS James Madison in the opener. Minshew a Juco transfer of Northwest Mississippi Community College flips it out to die. He stood up. Good job to shield the football there at the 30. And Thomas Sirk done and he took some big time shots today Randy to make plays. Yeah he'll, he'll spend some time in some ice tubs over the course of the next few days if he's smart. And at 24 years old having graduated from Duke and also having a holding a master's degree one assumes he's extremely intelligent will ice himself down repeatedly. Listen to what the trainer says. Creeping pressure from USF. Minshew back footed throw off target to Quay Johnson. So 441 to go down 30. Point totals allowed by ECU. There's plenty of ice. Yeah, that's about how much ice he's going to need. All those bats each day. So if you're curious about how much it takes, it takes about four gigantic bags like that. He'll get right. Austin Barnes has done so in game. He had limped off after contact on a penalty earlier. There is skip snap. Joss gets it off. And a booming punt at that. Dearness Johnson immediately contacted. Great job on special teams. Six. ECU has allowed 56 plus three times this year and the Bulls back to offense. Will it be Quentin Flowers? Both starting quarterbacks done. Quentin Flowers watches from the sidelines. There are the final numbers. Pretty darn good day. As he's barely more than 10 yards shy of 3,000 rushing on his career and has broken the 9,000 total yard mark today. So, for those of you that were worried about Quentin Flowers not sort of playing well enough or making stocking stats up enough for you, he gave you one of those games today. And look out next month, it's October. Brett Keen connects with Mitchell Wilcox. That's exactly what Flowers did last year, right? His numbers through four games, eerily similar to this year, but he completed 62% of his passes from the fifth game on last year. Yeah. He he's just gets better and better as the season goes on. We've said it. This is the third offense, third year in a row. That's a lot of adjusting. Brett Keen, a couple of completions. Only had four on the year entering today, but a gaudy advantage that was created by Flowers and all of his teammates. A true team display for USF. Multiple different scores and some giant momentum swings led by special teams and defense. The Wildcat look. The run right into the pile. Nowadays with the shotgun and some of the talents of these quarterbacks when is it not wildcat. 
Does it qualify, I guess, as Wildcat when the guy doesn't have a quarterback number? But I don't know, Patterson and Ole Miss were 20. That's Chris Oladokun. Just milking some clock here. Oladokun, a sophomore QB out of Miami, Florida. We've got some different bodies up front in this offensive line, a couple. But this is a group that's really had a heck of a job, done a heck of a job today. Off the play fake. Tight end. Enjoying his grabs during this drive. Mitchell Wilcox, four catches on the season, entering today. He's already got three on this possession. And the Bulls are looking at their 10th consecutive victory, Randy. Would it be wins in 23 of 27? One of the hottest teams in America. Hey, isn't it funny? We're looking at a game that we've seen 92 points scored. We've seen what seems like 2,000, but about 1,000 yards of offense, offense compiled. And the two biggest plays were a defensive play and a special teams play that seemed to kind of spin this thing in USF's direction. Pirates slow to get up there in Alex Kerner. Yeah, they help to cement things for USF. Play fake Keen. Not quite as elusive as Flowers. Bobby Fulp able to handle him at the 45. 99.9999% of America isn't as elusive as Quentin Flowers. It's something to be. You're in a very large group if you're not as elusive as Quentin Flowers. What well, they got sunflower seeds working on the sidelines? Sharing the joy with yeah. his teammates. Trayvon Sands gets the first down run. Got a bull down. O lineman. It's Brooks Larkin, the redshirt freshman. He's a lineman. He's limping. He ain't coming out. Nice moves by Sands. Ball loose. That ball came out when the helmet. ECU believes it has it. Yes, Pirate football. That's the first turnover of USF giving it to ECU today. And it all comes with a helmet on the ball right there. That was a nice job. Sands trying to protect the ball. But a lot of times, I don't care how strong you are, you can't protect that ball once it gets hit by a helmet like that right on the forearm. Austin Teague was part of the pair that made the contact, and Teague first to fall upon the free football. But Gardner Minshew is back out there for ECU as Flowers, who has brought stability to the quarterback position and has helped to resurrect the USF program, basks in the glow of this significant lead. The USF had five different starting quarterbacks over two years before Quinton Flowers arrived. And now with Charlie Strong as his head coach, who recruited him to be a DB at Louisville. Well, it talks about you know the, the job Taggart did in the state of Florida that really separated this program. Charlie Strong is only going to add to it. So you better get used to seeing USF being really, really good, really good at football for a while. They are going to be in really good hands with Charlie Strong with a steady, steady stream of extremely good talent just coming from the state of Florida. Yeah, the cupboard was pretty full upon arrival. He'll attempt to continue to stock it. As USF about to run its record to 5-0, 2-0 in league play, while the Pirates will tumble to 1-4 and 1-1 one and one and one in American Athletic Conference action. Charlie Strong bowls unblemished.
The top 20 in the country going back to last year. The program has won 10 consecutive games, a program record. And the 5 0 mark ties is the second best start in school history. That's not always been a great omen. Some of the greatest starts they've enjoyed through four to six games have not yielded the results that they would want. The key is going to be the discipline I've been talking about. If they ratchet up that discipline, they can play solid week to week. If you lack that discipline, somewhere, somehow, you're going to stumble against somebody you got no business losing to. Losing to. That's what that lack of discipline usually leads to. They're going to have a week off before homecoming against the Cincinnati Bearcats on October the 14th. Okay. They'll have a chance to fix things up a little bit. Had the long preparation right, let's throw as they hadn't played since two, two Thursdays ago entering Charlie, today. Let's go down to the field. Jordan Daigle with the victorious head coach, Charlie Strong. Thank you, John. Coach Quentin, Fal Quentin Flowers continuing to utilize his playmakers around him. How has he continued to evolve in this offense? Well, you, if you look at Quentin, and he, we know that he's an unbelievable player. And I always, we always talk to him about, you know, just making everybody else around you better. And that's what he does. He's able to find the receivers and throw the ball in the right places. And then our run game, we rush for over 300 yards again. So it's really good when we play physical at the point of attack. And on your defense, they were giving up some big plays, unable to stop fourth down conversions, yet hanging in there and making big stops to close out the game. How do you address your defense improvements this week? Well, you look at us on fourth down, a big one over on the sideline was a missed tackle, and we got a chance to knock him back. Then right before the, uh, halftime, they go to the jump pass and score on us. What we did, just pull the ball out. But we can improve. What's really good is last week we played so well on defense, and then this week, now we have a chance to go back and really coach them hard. Thank you so much, Coach. Congrats on the win. All right. Appreciate it, Jordan. Quick, Best scoring performance for side. USF on the season. And they ran, by the way, for nearly 400, 390 on the ground today. A varied attack. Thomas Sirk, a valiant effort for ECU. But a tip ball interception and a blocked punt helped right, derail any chance. Now we check back with Jordan Daigle. She's with the QB, Quentin Flowers. Thank you, John. Well, Quentin, another career day for you. How would you describe the chemistry that you keep developing with your offense and the playmakers around you? Um, you know, the line, they just keep giving me a chance, giving me another opportunity, you know, go out there and make plays. And uh, like I always say, you know, it always something you can get better at in the day. You know, I was just hitting my targets whenever I get a chance. And how have you continued to develop your play with Marquez valdez Scantling? Um, I'll say it started early in the week. You know, I told him we need him. We worked on him a lot. You know, we seen what type of balls we had to throw and we came out and everything worked today and we just gave him a chance and he made everything happen. Thank you so much, Quentin. No problem. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jordan. Quentin Flowers, the star today. The Bulls, very ECU, a 61-31 final. More to come when we're back. Back. Welcome on to back to Greenville. 61 31 USF smothers ECU. As the Bulls are 5 0, tied as the second best start in program history. And they also have the second best active win streak in America. Make it 10 in a row going back to last year, Randy Cross, and a varied display from the Bulls today. It really was. I mean, defensively, Charlie Strong and After company this, will have a huge amount of things to work on because they did have some flaws and they did make some mistakes. Offensively, I, I thought they were about as impressive a team offensively as I've seen. At times, they made it look effortless. And that's something that I think all goes back to the quarterback, Quentin Flowers. Yeah, he certainly had himself a day as we review the highlights from today. Quentin Flowers able to scamper in here. The tip ball pick. That's the first, the only pick six interception among their FBS leading total on the campaign. Of course, they have a jump flip for the score just before halftime. And then the Bulls dominated in the second. And the second half was about not, not Quentin Flowers' feet, but Quentin Flowers' arm. They went into this game, ACU did. They wanted Flowers to beat him with their arm, with his arm. Second half, he beat him with his arm. 160 in the air, 93 on the ground, nearly 400 rushing for the Bulls, their best scoring day of the year. You have to go back to November of 2015, the last time they put up a point total this gaudy against FBS competition. So coming up, 
Our men at West Point will get you set for UTEP Army. That's still to come. Miners Black Knights, the preview after the break. College football continues next. UTEP takes on the Army Black Knights at West Point. 7 Eastern Air Force faces New Mexico. Cap it off. Number 19, San Diego State plays host to Northern Illinois at 1030. All right here on CBS Sports Network. UTEP looking for its first ever win in the Eastern time zone. Lost by over 50 to Army last year. What stands out to you? Well, if you're a fan of people matriculating the ball down the field by foot, you're going to be nuts about these next three games. Army is a team that can really do it on the ground. New Mexico and Air Force are both runners, and San Diego State has the best runner in the country in Penny. The running of the Bulls off to a 5-0 and start. They have won 10 straight games. They'll be off next week. Homecoming against Cincinnati, the first ever matchup against Tulane. The war on I-4 closes it out against USF. Where are they most vulnerable? I'd say, like I said, or I've been saying today, I, I think it's internal. They should win the rest of their games. They should finish 12 and 0. If they don't, it's going to be a discipline issue. It's going to be a matter of them giving something away. ECU will have Temple next, which mustered a second half surge, but fell short by a score to Houston today. Yeah, I think that one's a fair fight. Them and BYU is probably a fair fight. They got a chance to get a couple more wins on this schedule. And that's what's on the docket for the Pirates and the Bulls. We still have more to come on CBS Sports Network. For the Hall of Famer, Randy Cross, Jordan Daigle, and our entire CBS crew, I'm John Sadak. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Now we'll send you out to West Point, New York. It's our men Ben Holden, Jay Feeling, and John Triffin on the call as the UTEP Miners face the Army Black Knights. So long from Greenville.